practicing with shadow swings can be very beneficial. In this video, I'm gonna talk about how you can improve your spacing and your footwork using shadow swings without actually hitting the ball. Because when you go out there and try these things while hitting a live ball, there's so many variables and it's hard to know if you're doing it correctly versus if you can isolate it and really slow it down, you can start internalizing these concepts in your mind. In this first demonstration, I'm going to be using the Top Spin Pro tool, which I think is a great tool for improving your top spin, but also improving a lot of aspects of your game, including your footwork and your spacing. If you'd like to get a Top Spin Pro, the link is down in the description. I'll also show you how you can do these exercises without the Top Spin Pro if you just put a ball or a cone down on the ground. So in this first example, I'm practicing more of an open stance forehand. So the Top Spin Pro is pretty deep in the court and I'm starting pretty close to it. So I'm only gonna take one step and then hit the ball. And so I'm practicing stepping out, transferring my weight onto this leg and hitting the ball. So from here, I'm stepping out, hitting the ball. When I'm hitting this ball, I wanna have my elbow away from my side when I start my swing so that I have a lot of space to hit a good shot. So if I take too many steps towards this ball, I get in the way of it and I'm more jammed when hitting, I lose power and it's not as comfortable. So practicing this over and over, starting in slow motion where I'm stepping out, I'm turning my shoulders as I step out, so I'm practicing this good first move, and then I'm hitting. All right, all I need for this shot is one step, and because the ball is deep in the court, I'm choosing to step onto my outside foot before hitting the ball. Now I'm going to add a split step in before I start my move because it's good to get used to split stepping, landing, moving, and hitting all in sequence because it's important that you do a split step every time when your opponent is about to hit the ball. Notice how this inside foot is getting off the ground when I'm hitting. It's because my weight is all on my outside leg and I'm pushing up as I'm hitting, right? I see players make the mistake of trying to push forward into that shot and they end up off balance. So open stance, we often wanna just shift up and then land. Closed stance, we can be shifting our weight more forward. To simulate different patterns, I can leave the Top Spin Pro where it is and I'll just simply move over this way. So from here, I can get there in one step. But now I wanna work on my two steps to the ball. So I'm gonna move over slightly, I'll test it out and so maybe it'll be a crossover step and then a step out before I hit. So find the range that you want. So after two steps, you end up with good extension for your swing. And then starting from here, now I'm doing two steps to the ball. So I split step, one, two, hit. Notice this time I'm starting with my inside foot first because I know that I wanna end up on my outside leg and I only need two steps to get there. So if I start from my outside leg first, I'm gonna end up crossed over, which is not a great position to be in when you're parallel to the baseline on a deep ball because it really limits your hips from rotating. So if I'm here, I can't rotate very well versus here, I can really rotate out of that position nicely. Your goal when you're playing should be to take as few steps as possible because that's the most efficient. So from here, instead of taking four or five steps, I'm only taking two. So you wanna get in the habit of doing a large step size when you're moving to the ball because you'll conserve energy and you'll get there faster than if you're taking small steps to the ball, trying to get to that same ball. Now let's try three steps. So first I estimate that about here is where I need to be to take three steps to that ball. One, two, three, and then I have good space to hit it. So I'm going to recover back to here every time. Notice that when I recover, after I hit the ball, I'm doing a crossover step so that I get there quickly. The other thing I want you to notice is that on all these footwork patterns, I'm turning on the first step. So I'm stepping out and turning so that I'm not in a rush when I get to the ball, right? What we don't wanna do is run to the ball and then have to take the paddle back and swing because then we're in a rush.
If you don't have the Top Spin Pro Tool, you can still do all of these exercises. You just won't get the feeling of actually hitting the ball after you've completed the footwork pattern. I'll simply just put the ball down on the court in the same spot and I'll practice measuring my steps to get there with enough space to hit, right? So I'm trying to have my paddle be in line with where the ball is. Now let's say I wanna practice a bit shorter ball, so I move the Top Spin Pro into the court, and from here, I should be able to take one step forward and then hit that ball with good spacing. So I'm finding the distance that I need to be away where I can just take one step forward and then hit. So if I do that from here, from too much behind the Top Spin Pro, I'm gonna be jammed when I'm hitting. Now I wanna make it into a two-step pattern, so I'm gonna slide over this way a little bit. So I step out with my left foot, and then I step in with my right. So I step out, and then I step in. Now I'm doing two steps because I'm starting a little further over. So split step, 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 hit. The other thing this will train is the timing of when your foot should hit the ground. So on a shot like this, we want our foot to hit the ground just before we start our swing so that we're using all forces together. If I step early, now I disconnect and I'm just using my upper body on the hit and it's not gonna feel as good or be as powerful of a shot. Now I'll practice an even shorter ball. So one where I have to move more than one step forward into. So I'll measure it first. Let's see if I can get there in three. And I can, so the Top Spin Pro is in a good position. There's a couple different ways you can do this pattern. You can either use crossover steps or you can step and then shuffle. The shuffle's okay because you're just doing it once. If you have to shuffle more than once, then you'd rather turn and run because it's more efficient. So that's the example of the shuffle where I take that big first step, I turn my shoulders, and then I do a big shuffle into the ball. Notice how I hopped after I hit? It's because I had so much momentum moving forward that I caught my balance by doing a hop. These types of things will result naturally if you're using good power from the legs and not stopping too early before the ball. So what I sometimes see players do is they don't go far enough forward. They end up having to reach too far in front to play the ball and they end up off balance because their weight goes down. Whereas if they can continue through that shot, now they're nice and on balance through their swing. Here's the example of crossing over the feet. So one, two, three. And I'm kind of using this center line as a reference point. I don't want to veer off too much from this center line or else I get myself too close to the ball and I can't extend my elbow away from my side. Notice how now I'm in the court quite a bit, and if I'm not gonna to come to the net after this shot, I have a long distance to recover, so again, I wanna turn and run back. Just to show you an example of that last one, if you don't have the Top Spin Pro, is putting the ball right there. Same thing, just shadowing, trying to measure how far away you need to be to get the center of the paddle on the ball right there. The slower you go when you do these patterns, you can really be aware of what steps you're taking. All right, so I'm really aware that I'm doing good footwork to that ball because I'm going slow. If I start going too fast, it might be hard to realize what I'm doing. So again, I'm improving a lot of things by shadowing with the Top Spin Pro, and it's actually pretty fun, so I don't get bored very quickly by doing it. I'm improving my spacing, so figuring out how far away I need to be from the ball so that it's nice and relaxed, nice and clean. So that means my step size and also how many steps I take. I'm getting used to putting my body in different turning positions. So I'm getting used to this. I'm also getting used to this. Same thing going forward. These are just some examples of a few footwork patterns, but there's many more that you can practice. And I also encourage you to practice it on the backhand side as well. So try some of these shadow swing drills out and it will definitely improve your footwork and spacing on the court.